Alright everybody, so in this video I'm going to be showing you how to rip your music to FLAC files, which is a lossless compression format, using a program called Exact Audio Copy. Now I'm assuming you already know your reasons for wanting to do this if you're coming to this video, so I won't get into it as it will start a huge discussion, but basically if you want super high quality audio, if you have some really good pair of headphones and a DAC or amplifier and you want to listen to all the frequencies possible, you're going to want your music in a pretty good format. Obviously 320 kilobit MP3s are somewhat acceptable, and I mean, it, it, if you're going with MP3s because you need it to work with an iPod or something, that's certainly your best option, or lo Apple lossless codec, of course. Or you could use exact audio copy and get you some FLAC files, which will work in a variety of media players, just not iTunes, and you can play on your computer with some high-quality cans or a hi-fi system. Now to get exact audio copy, go to exactaudiocopy.de and download it and install it. And make sure you have a CD in your system. A couple of notes about ripping CDs, which I feel like in 2015 I shouldn't have to cover, but just in case I do. A, if you have a copied CD or a custom burnt CD, it's probably not a good idea to want to rip it to flack because if it's burnt from MP3s, you're just going to have horrible sounding audio in the first place. And if it's copied, there could still be some compression issues. So you want to make sure you have original CDs. And if they're too, too scratched up, it may not work, but it's still worth a shot. Now, before you do anything, we're going to want to change some options. So go up here to EAC options, or it may pop up the wizard on you first. And you're going to be greeted with this. You want to leave ask every time set up. That way you can set up your audio in different folders. Head up to the extraction tab and just kind of make sure it looks like this. The big difference you're going to be looking for is the error recovery quality. You want it to be high, especially if you're using older CDs that have some scratches on it, as you want it to have the highest quality error recovery as possible. On the general tab, just make sure it generally looks like this. I don't have full explanation for it. You certainly don't want it to turn off your computer or anything like that. Um, tell it to wait for external compressors. Most of this should be about the same. Um, you definitely want it to automatically access the online media database that way you can get your artists and song titles and stuff because if you're ripping like more than two cds putting in your own metadata is going to be a royal pain in the butt hopping over to the tools tab same thing make sure it kind of looks like this there are some things you might want to change but personally this is what i prefer it hides the compressor window so you don't have more windows popping up that you could screw up it creates a playlist so that way you have playlists for winamp and things like that don't normalize. You can set up your file name structure to be like artist artist album title dash track number dash track title. That's how I keep it. You have all these options you can choose from to create your own naming scheme. That's what I like about it. And then hit OK. Next, we're going to go up to Drive Options. It's going to pop up this window. I keep unchecking it. Hit OK. And then you're going to want it to be in secure mode. And you're going to hit detect read features. I'm not going to do it now because I already have it set up, but it's going to tell you what features your drive has available and automatically check them. So just leave it as that because if you tell it it has something that it does not have, it's going to screw things up. Hit the drive tag, ta tag, tab, and basically leave everything unchecked. But um, ideally, you're going to be using M MMC1. You can auto detect the command and it'll tell you something different. But ideally, you're going to be MMC1 through 3. So choose one, but then auto detect it and let it tell you which one it is and see what it tells you. Offset speed, leave alone, although make sure it's kind of like that. Gap detection, leave alone. Detection, oh, actually don't leave this alone. Detection method A or B, I believe. Sometimes you can use C, but I hear C is like a last resort. A and B are the best detection. You want it to be secure. That way it is secure in this, form, in this context of the application basically just means as accurate as possible and then you don't need to worry about the writer because we're not going to be writing for this tutorial hit ok and then go up to compression options we're going to be messing with a lot of options real quick here i'm just trying to blow through them waveform you don't do anything with external compl compression click that user defined encoder and we're going to be using dot flac and it should have exact audio copy should have installed a copy of the flac encoder with it as you see here it's in the exact audio copy program files that's what you need. We're going to be using FLAC files. Now change the bitrate all the way down to the bottom, one megabit per second. That's what we want. That's the highest possible quality. Make sure high quality is checked. There's no reason to there's no reason to rip to a lossless format if you're going to use lower than the highest quality. That defeats the purpose. 
Make sure delete wave file after compression is checked, that way it deletes it, because first it rips it to a completely uncompressed wave, and then it compresses it to whatever you want. You don't want two copies, that's going to take up a hell of a lot of space. And then make sure all those are checked. Comments, write the comment text to the ID3 tag, you're probably not going to be using comments, but just in case. And then you're going to want all this pretty much set up. This just sets up metadata tags that most media programs will recognize. Hit OK. Obviously pause the video at whatever point and go back if you need to get the options set up. Alright, metadata provider. By default it uses like Qtools or something and has you set that up. I prefer, Qtools actually only gives you 10 free ones before you have to pay for it. So I use the FreeDB metadata plugin and then put in your email, get an active server list and it will use that to automatically detect your metadata. Now I'm going to eject my CD and put it back in so you can see what happens when it is detected and back in. And if it for sure finds a single option of what your CD is, it will automatically, like this, fill in your information, which is great. That's what you want it to do. Now every once in a while something's going to be missing, like for here, that's the year. Um, Street Fighter 3 original soundtrack. Oh, I actually have, um, I'm ripping the Street Fighter 25th anniversary collection CDs, and so they're all, they all show up as different things because they're different soundtracks. And so this is what it's going to look like. Otherwise, it's going to pop up a little box that asks you to choose from a couple of different options. Just pick the one that seems to be the most accurate for your CD. Double check to make sure the songs are right, like here, and you're good to go. And then over here where it says CD cover, you're going to want to right click in this empty space and hit get new image for metadata provider. And then it's going to provide you an option to search for album covers. I'm going to delete, you usually want to delete any extraneous text because it's going to have trouble finding it. And then I always start with the large images so you can get as high quality of an album as possible. Obviously here it's not going to do that because this is kind of a niche thing that may not even have an album cover in the first place because you see here it's pulling up game covers. In most cases it's going to have an album cover if you're doing actual music. I'm doing weird things, weird soundtracks and stuff so it's not going to have it. So for the sake of this video I'm just going to choose a game cover here. And then you are good to go to start the ripping process overall. But before we can rip, rip, we have to do one thing. Well, actually two things. So select all your tracks. You can either just drag up and select them all or hit Control A. Go up here to Action and hit Detect Gaps. What this is going to do is it's going to detect the gaps between all of your tracks. Sometimes CDs leave gaps between tracks before they start. And you, for the ripping process, you want to make sure that it knows where those gaps are. Otherwise, the ripping process may screw up a little bit. It, it's more of a safety precaution, but again, when you're ripping to lossless format, you want it to be as straight, you know, as seamless as possible. So that's what we are doing here. And it's just going to go through and read your CD and detect the gaps between the tracks. And then let's say you wanted to double check that a track was what it said. Say you don't remember it, you can select it and then hit the play button up here. That seems to be correct. Now the down here is the progress of the song that's playing. Unfortunately you can't really skip forward because it's reading it live from the CD so if you try to skip forward it's just going to get all jumpy and act weird. And then over here by the way you can also select the you can change uh, track numbers. And so for example this is actually CD 4 I want to say. One, two, no it's CD 3 out of 11 out of the set. Now, technically, for this album, it's one of two, but for the whole set, which is what I'm tracking, it's three out of 11, so that's what I'm going to select here, and then that's going to add that to the metadata as well. And then say you have a two-part soundtrack that just goes from disc one to disc two, and say disc one starts with track one, but disc two starts with track 26 or something, you can tell it what the first track number is, so it doesn't restart it at track one and confuse the information. With this one, it does start over at one each disc, so that's what I'm going to tell it to do. Now once your gaps are detected, this column right here where it says gap is going to fill in. A lot of them will just be 2 or like 2 seconds or 0.2 seconds or 0, but a lot of music CDs that have ripped have had quite a few gaps. Next you want to go up here to action and go to create cue sheet and we're going to do multiple wave files with gaps because we have the gaps and we're going to be doing multiple files and that's the easiest way to go. We're not leaving out the gaps, we're not correcting for gaps, we're just leaving them there and we're having multiple files. And the cue sheet is basically just like 
It's hard to describe. It's kind of like a playlist list and just tracking to make sure everything is as it's supposed to. And so tell it where to go. You can make a folder structure. You can typically you want to do it like this where it's artist, album, year, flack, but that's my personal preference. Um, for this specific set, I'm putting them all in one folder. It's the Street Fighter 25th anniversary set of soundtracks and other sound effects. And then you name your cue file, which typically should be the album name, but you can technically change it to whatever you want. And then I'm going to change this to be 25th anniversary set disc three and hit save. Finally, go up here to action, test and copy selected tracks compressed. You want to test it, that way it can error correct it, and then copying it is just compressing it to FLAC files. And then that's what compress means, is we're doing the FLAC files instead of the WAV files. If you wanted to rip to uncompressed WAV, you can do uncompressed. We are doing correct, com we're doing compressed for the sake of this video. Then it pops up where you wanted to save it, should be in the same place as your Q folder always, or Q file always, but it should automatically take you to the folder you just made. Hit OK, and it's going to go through and test and rip your tracks. Now this box right here where it says error correction will light up uh, if it's spending a lot of time error correcting and often I've had it on really damaged CDs where it will have a sync error where it will be unable to either rip the file to a WAV file or it will be unable to compress it. If it's unable to compress it because of the error correcting you still are actually given a WAV file in that folder that doesn't get deleted. You can either delete it or keep it. In my experience the WAV file still ends up being intact and useful. But if you're going for a pure FLAC encoding, then you may not want to do that. However, if it doesn't, if it's not able to rip it at all, then basically you just need to either not worry about that song or find another copy of the CD. This will, this whole process will vary depending on how many tracks are on your song, on or how many songs are on your CD. Typically, it'll take about an hour to an hour and a half total to test and copy all the songs and then your CD is done. Obviously this is a lot slower than normal CD ripping, however that's because it's double checking for errors, for compression issues, things like that, and then ripping it and then compressing it to flack. And to me the end result is well worth it. I do hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful towards learning to extract your audio with ex exact audio copy into flack format. If you have any questions, I do suggest posting in the support area for EAC and or general audio forums and getting help there or talking to each other in the comments. Leave a like if you liked the video. Leave a dislike if you disliked it. Subscribe for more tech videos. Check out our other content and our support links in the description below. And I will see you all in a future video. Thank you for watching. My name's been Adam or Epos Vox.